But yeah, does it? Does it, this guy look like me? Doesn't he? Doesn't he? Hello everyone. Th this is Mandy G. And the over here or Thought in Theater. I'm still coming up with the names. But uh I've had them for a couple while now, so I thought I'd shoot them off. Um but yeah. Does it, does it this guy look like me? Doesn't he? Doesn't he? But, uh, yeah. Today is a review that I'm, I'm going to be doing of a, what's it called? Uh, it's an, it's an, of an anime. The called a Dongwa that came out recently. Um, I think in the, in the past couple of months, it's a it's a Chinese and Chinese anime. It came out in February. I just started watching it. Um, it's it was it's a very simple anime it tells a story of a revenge story of a homeless young man called he Fengzi, whose family was betrayed by his own people while they were migrating and were brutally murdered the pro protagonist pretended to be dead and escaped and after he, he survived the massacre, he practiced martial arts and was determined to avenge his family. It's cut and throat. It's, it's a very simple revenge story. And this is... This is when I'll, I'll be sort of off about the animation because the animation is a mix between 2D and 3D. The fight scenes were, they were okay. They were, they were good with, um, they were good with how the power structure was determined there were no like stuff like key or any like other things like normally that chinese that uh, anime chinese martial arts it was just straight up martial arts and i like that i like that they didn't have that i also like that the protagonist struggled in his fights um he really struggled in his fights you could see that um what i dislike though his fights were basically he, the story was basically he goes like this is a spur uh review he goes to a place fights a bad guy gets a clue not even before he's a, he before he gets a clue, he struggles to fight the bad guy, and then eventually wins, gets a clue, and then goes to a new place. This is go. This goes on until like episode ten to ten or twelve. This 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 goes on, and you don't. You're cheering for the for the protagonist. The, the the story makes you question the morality of 
Is it right to seek revenge? Um, and is it just is it right to seek revenge? And what happens after you, you get your revenge? And what are the consequences of that revenge? And so basically the story the story goes the reason that the villains who from another point of view could be seen as protagonists the reason why they they killed the main characters the mc's um family is because at one point um uh 13 years ago at one point the um, main character's dad starting started to um store all the food in the area when there was like a flooding and and people were getting killed people were starving people were eating bodies which helped with how much they were starving and then the governor the MC's dad was a governor um i think a military governor there and he colluded with another another small time uh official to store all the food and made a profit of it and because of that they they were assembled to kill the officer so that they can save the people and that's a very deep question because the mo most of the villains didn't want to kill the main character's family they just wanted to kill that one guy but there was one other guy who was like, if we leave, he he gave the all the the villains have like moral, a good moral standing, because as one there was one guy, one big guy, he was like, if we leave the main character's family alive, it will come back to bite us in the ass later. Because they will come back to get revenge. And that's basically what happened. They left the kid alive. And but killed the entire family, but they left the kid alive. And that kid grew up, learned martial arts, and started getting revenge. He killed literally everyone. What I'm liking about this it was the more although it's a very simple story the moral dilemma that you're in because you root for the you root for the they give like a sort of backstory for the for the villains and you can tell you can tell why they did what they did and it's just very intriguing to see how complex this story is when compared to other types of revenge stories because you could very you could very, you could have like a very deep hour long debate on this story and what it represents in the is it right that the that the main character is seeking revenge against against the the antagonists even though they were doing what they did what they did because the main character's father was was a villain who was hoarding all the food when their people were starving or is it right for the the, the antagonists 
to kill the main character's entire family just to just for them not just for the results being that they didn't end up saving anyone afterwards because there was a drought and you could see you could see that nothing happened after nothing changed after after the main character's dad died someone just replaced him probably so that's why I very much recommend uh this this uh Donghua anime um I I would give it a three point five out of out of five just because I'm I'm uh although the fight scenes are fight scenes are good I'm getting tired of the the fight one fight a bad like get a clue fight a bad guy struggle to still fight a bad against that bad guy um eventually beat that bad guy and get another clue and then just repeat repeat repeat. I like the fact that they added the little girl. It gives a certain certain nuance to the story. Um, like, is it right for the main character to teach that little girl martial arts just for her to? Eventually, she'll have to kill someone if he teaches her martial arts. That's the questions that pop into my head as I watch all this story. Um, I very much recommend it. Uh, it's a very, it's a very good uh, anime. Uh, I give I give it a three point five out of, out of five. Um, if you guys like this video, please. Thumbs up, subscribe, and comment down below. And thank you very much.